Following World War II, Western countries next to Soviet Union were concerned about the security of their aviation bases. The Dornier DO-31 vertical takeoff and landing personnel transport was created by the new German Air Force, the Luftwaffe. Three prototypes were created by the German engineers, resulting in a troop transport with 10 engines. Today, the Dornier DO-31 is the only VTOL direct transport aircraft to have established five world records, making it the only aircraft to have done so. Tensions with the Soviet Union developed after World War II, victors partitioned and occupied Germany. Concerns were raised during the Berlin airlift in 1948, when the Soviet Union restricted access to the city's western sector, forcing Allies to resupply the region by air. The U.S. military leadership considered the potential of a third global war and Soviet strikes focusing on vulnerable airfields on German land. Aircraft could not take off without large runways, while ordinary subsonic aircraft only needed roughly 100 meters to take off during World War II. The introduction of jet engines and an aircraft transformed aviation, making it quicker and more dangerous. They did, however, needed long runways, which were viewed as a liability, particularly near Soviet borders. Western Germany was therefore rendered defenseless, allowing the German Air Force to be rapidly neutralized. As a result, Germany invested substantially in the vertical takeoff and landing VTOL aircraft in order to ensure the safety of its airfields and the stability of its air force. The Germans developed a vertical takeoff and horizontal flight VTOL aircraft to meet their aviation demands. Long runways and airfields would be unnecessary allowing them to be hidden in the countryside or used as tiny operations bases. The German military might even launch these planes from the Autobahn network. West Germany began investigating a VTOL Air Force in the 1960s, while the Luftwaffe adopted its Lockheed F-104 Starfighters to rocket launch them from stationary ramps. The objective was to develop a safe and effective platform capable of swiftly launching aircraft into the sky while maintaining a quick operating reaction force in the shortest period of time. The project, which had some success, was suspended in 1962 with true VTOL aircraft. For tiny bases or autobahn launches, the Federal Ministry of Defense required a VTOL aircraft. Positive VTOL fighters had been tried by the British French, Soviet, Americans and the German aircraft, notably the Hawker Siddeley, Riso Bozek and the Lockheed Hummingbird. Three German companies filed for the development of VTOL with strike, fighter and transport types. The first was the Messerschmitt, Hinkel and Belkan EWR VJ-101 interceptor aircraft. It was capable of Mark II and the first VTOL to exceed Mark I during testing. The VJ-101, on the other hand, was cancelled in 1968 owing to faulty and unmentionable role induced by a faulty rotor gyro. VFW designed the German VTOL VAK-191 strike fighter to replace the Italian Fiat G91 as a nuclear-equipped fighter. However, due to continual development revisions, it was cancelled in 1975. Dornier, a well-known maker of flying boards, set out to create the world's first VTOL transport, the Dornier DO-31E, which could carry up to 35 soldiers and vehicles. This enormous undertaking demonstrated the brilliance of German aircraft engineering. Dornier, which has a history of creating VTOL platforms, sought to create a short takeoff and landing vehicles STOL, using a modified DO-27 light transport. The DO-31 was intended to be more than just a medium transport aircraft with two underwing pods housing Bristol Pegasus 5 vector thrust turbofan engines and two wingtip pods 
housing Rolls-Royce RB162 4D engines. These engines produced over 65,000 pounds of force and made a loud noise. The DO-31 could carry 36 fully outfitted soldiers and goods, including three mini-jeeps that could board via a landing ramp at the back. With a maximum cargo capacity of 11,000 pounds and a range of 1,100 miles, the DO-31 was a successful aircraft. The flight control system created by the German engineers was credited with its success. NASA scientists from the Ames and Langley Research Centers aided in research on transition approaches and vertical landing phases. The DO-31 also had an innovative hybrid computer system for flying stability. Dornier created three prototypes, the first of which was built for horizontal testing to assess the performance of the Pegasus engine. Dornier spent five years developing the DO-31 aircraft, beginning with static airframe testing and a fully outfitted VTOL transport. If the engine noise could be minimized, the business envisioned a commercial DO-31 transport. In February 1967, the main test pilot, US Marine Jury Ward, flew the DO-31 for the first time switching from horizontal to vertical flight. Wood complemented the E-1 for its simple, traditional design which had Pegasus nozzles for short aerodynamic takeoff and landings. After the first trip, Wood felt at ease on the plane. The Dornier DO-31, dubbed the Reluctant Dragon, displayed its capabilities during a series of test flights. It was called after an occurrence in which exhaust fumes rebounded off the ground, resulting in one-of-a-kind takeoff attempt. Despite minor hiccups, the DO-31 performed admirably. Wood flew the DO-31 to the Paris Air Show in May 1969, establishing multiple world records with a ferry flight. With permission from the Federal National Aeronautics International, a German co-pilot demonstrated the DO-31's capacity to fly like a VTOL fighter. All those years ago, Wood, an American test pilot, achieved five world records – speed, distance, altitude, speed over a course, and endurance. In 1968, he got the I-1C Kneshnov Award from the Society of Experimental Test Pilots, and in 1970, he was awarded the Federal Service Cross by the German President Gustav Hermann. The DO-31, despite its promise as the world's sole VTOL transport, was terminated in 1971 owing to lack of money and lack of NATO partners. The DO-31 made its final appearance at the International Aerospace Exhibition in Hanover before being kept until it was repaired and showed at the Duchess Museum. DO-31 still maintains the record for the most VTOL transport ever constructed. Thank you for watching my video. You can find more videos on German aircrafts from World War II on this channel. Subscribe if you like more content like this.